It's about culture, good vibes, and gathering around the table. Our culture is rich, our food is flavorful, and our people are friendly. When we gather around the table, we celebrate milestones, we laugh until we cry, and we create memories that last a lifetime. Good food brings people together. Food is love. It's comfort. It reminds us of our roots. Caribbean nations have long been celebrated for our food. The flavors are bold, the colors are vibrant, and the dishes are hearty. There's nothing quite like it because there is nothing quite like us. Welcome to the Caribbean Cookout Show. Hi, I'm Emily Frisch. And I'm Stacey Barrett. And welcome to the Caribbean Cookout Show. We have six different chefs who each represent a different Caribbean country coming together to highlight the beauty and culture of their nation through food, music, art, and unique traditions. We're not only here to celebrate Caribbean culture, but we're here to gather around the table and share a meal and swap stories of the island life. Welcome to the Caribbean Cookout Show. The Bahamas is a group of 700 islands in the Atlantic Ocean with a rich culture and heritage. The people of the Bahamas are known for their friendly nature and their love of good food. Bahamian cuisine is a blend of spicy influences from around the world. And today, we have a fantastic farm-to-table chef representing the Bahamas, Simeon Hall. Welcome, Chef Simeon, to the Caribbean Cookout Show. We're so happy to have you here with us today. But tell us more about why you joined us. Well, it's definitely an honor and a privilege to be here because I'm here to represent the Bahamas. And fortunately and unfortunately, because of the demographics of not being in the Caribbean Ocean, sometimes people don't want to put us in the category, but we're in the category. We are Caribbean. And I'm so excited to be a part of this because I want people to hear and to see and to taste the voice of the Bahamas. So tell us more about what you're gonna cook for us today. Well, anybody that knows the Bahamas knows I'm gonna cook conk. Conk is one of my favorites and definitely it identifies the Bahamas. And conk is my favorite, so I there cannot wait to taste it. Let's go to the kitchen. Let's do this. Welcome to the kitchen where the magic happens. Don't try to feel inspired, isn't this amazing? Yeah, of course. This is my office, so I'm super, super excited. I can, I can imagine. So tell me what you're going to start first with. I think I'm going to start with the conk, make sure that that goes well, and then the pigeon peas, and then everything else that I have planned. And you already know how I feel about my conk and my lambi. So lambi. I cannot wait to try it. <laughs> Good luck. I'll For sure. Thank you it. so much. I, I'm so excited because literally I've, I've taken uh, a lot of the traditional dishes, like I said, and transformed it. And so I've had a lot of people know rice, but a lot of people don't know grits. But in the Bahamas, we eat a lot of grits and we eat a lot of rice. So I've taken that and made uh, rice grits uh, with some heirloom grains. And then we have something called pea soup, pea soup and dumpling that's made with conch and ham and peas. So I've made that into a gravy or a sauce. Uh, and then I've, uh, I'm going to definitely cure a loin of snapper with goat pepper and salt. The Caribbean is amazing, but nobody seasons fish like the Bahamas. And so we have this technique of chopping salt in uh, peppers into salt. And that's the way that we season all of our fish. And I'm going to use that technique in a different way today. I don't know how many people get to eat pea soup and dumpling in a real authentic way. I really don't know, but you know, one of the things that I try to do with my guests and people that I bring to the Bahamas and, and I cook for is to give them a taste, a true taste of my grandmother's Bahamas. And so it's definitely something if you visit me, you'll get. Uh, do you get it in the resorts and stuff all the time? Maybe, maybe not but definitely you get it when you when you eat with me. Well, 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 what are we doing here? Making bohemian sauce. I see a whole lot of chopping. Yep. 
But you know a Caribbean show would not be a Caribbean show without a plot twist. <laughs> so I wanted to introduce you to Chef Justin from oh, Fresh Control Order. Don't think of that. Hey Chef, how are you? Good, how are you today? Amazing. Look what I got here. I got a couple Florida vegetables, right? Fresh from Florida is in the house and we brought some zucchini, some squash, some sweet peppers, but it comes with a little twist. So Chef, we have two guests tonight that are vegan, right? So we're gonna make two vegan portions for them. You've got the beautiful Florida veg and I can see you've got things going on here. Yep, it yep. smells incredible. So I know you're gonna be up to this task. Uh, I'll do something. You'll make some vegetable come. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, we'll make it up and don't worry yourself. I'll put this right here for you. Help. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I'm making bohemian mm. salt. Bohemian seasoning salt. So good. Yeah. Ooh, spicy. Of course. I can't wait to taste it. There we go. You know, I'm very, very fortunate. I am the grandson of two uh, chefs. Uh, both my grandmothers were chefs in the Bahamas. One of my grandmothers was one of the first black female restaurant tours of the region. The next one was one of the first nutritionists uh, at the doctor's hospital. And my great grandmother was one of the first uh, women in our country to own a corner store. And so I come from a long, long, long line of cooking. One of the things that I'm trying to do now is to bring that awareness of coming outside of that uh, sort of res resort life and stepping into some of the more famous uh, local hideaways and spots that uh, everybody should enjoy, whether you're a local or somebody coming for the first time. I've been very, very fortunate recently to have been featured in a, in a major magazine write-up talking about dining outside of the hotels. Nothing against the hotels. I just wanna, wanna make that clear, but there's more to the Bahamas than sun, sun, and sea. There's food and there's food culture and there's an amazing journey throughout all the islands. At a very, very uh, long period of time, my grandmother lived with us. And so from the age of four, I can remember making what at the time I thought was an omelet. Now as a trained chef, I realized <laughs> it was terrible eggs. But I started pretty early and so I had that around me all the time. So it was either uh, after school with my other grandmother who had retired at some point or it was living with my grandmother who was a famous chef at the time so my childhood was around food and my dad who's a famous bishop in the bahamas uh everything that we did was about food and fellowship and so that's a part of what my childhood looked like i always am reminded of the fact that taste is an opinion i can give you something and give you something the two of you have a different experience so I try to make sure that my technique, the way that I'm doing the food, my ingredients are superior, high quality ingredients, and the story behind it. One of the things that I found is that most people don't have a bad time eating food with a story. Who wants to tell you your food tastes bad if you tell them, this is my grandmother recipe? The minute you say Grammy, <laughs> they can tell you it tastes good. So, you know, having a story behind the food always makes it taste better and for me that's 95 percent of what i do and so some people may not like it but the majority of people certainly do hello hey what's going on i'm not even gonna ask you what you're doing here because all i'm here to do is to taste whatever you're making here on the pot oh, oh man can have some of course why not Okay. There you go. I'm gonna dig in. There you go. So tell me a little bit more about what this is. Well, this is pea soup, Bahamian pea soup, made into a sauce. So this is gonna be the sauce for the fish. Spicy. It's so good. So I, I wanted to know, what's the importance of okra in this dish? Why so much of it? Well, you know, okra is very symbolic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those ingredients that really, really connects us to our roots, the diaspora, of uh, food and using okra for me is very very important. I 
love how meaningful it is. Like just one simple ingredient can have yeah. all of this meaning. So I'm honored to eat your food. Uh, I can't wait so for much. everybody else to try it too. The Bahamas is special because we have 700 islands, keys and rocks. Uh, unlike most of the other Caribbean uh, countries, we are very, very diverse while being very, very similar. And so I call it uh, being island specific. So what you find in Grand Bahama, you don't find in Andros, you don't find in Exuma, you don't find in Bimini, and you don't find in Providence. But at the same time, you still find the similarities. And so because I've been studying that for the last 15 years, it has made my uh, culinary journey so much more interesting. So right now, I think I'm more of a storyteller than I am a chef. Jamaica has always been known for its Irie vibe and of course, the delicious food. The Jamaican people are passionate about their cuisine and it shows in the bold flavors and vibrant colors of their dishes. The fusion of African, Caribbean, Spanish and British influences has resulted in some of the most flavorful and exciting dishes in the world. We are excited to greet our second chef today, cooking from Jamaica, Garcia Brown. Welcome, Chef Garcia, to the Caribbean Cookout Show. We're so incredibly happy to have you here with us today, but everyone wants to know, why did you come out today? My mother used to cook these awesome, low-budget meals. I mean, they were very good. As a single parent, I'm telling you, like, everything that she put her hand to, it was so amazing because it was done with so much love and care. I mean, she worked very long hours and we would have to take care of ourselves until she come back home i mean so we were very familiar with the kitchen she always dedicated days like when she would be home early to cook us the best meal ever and one of my favorite story leading up to the dish that i'll be preparing on this show is the stew piece like every Thursday, while we approach home, like coming from school, we would listen out for that pressure cooker. And whenever we hear the pressure cooker, we know what time it was. It's two peas, and everybody look forward for that two peas, you know. And so I grew, I, I, I interacted with her in the kitchen, and uh, yeah, we had uh, what we call bush cooking in Jamaica. So my uncles would slaughter a, a, a pig, a, a goat, and would cook for what they call nine night and stuff like that. So I've been around the food like informally, you know, and learning that hominess, that love, that care. So tell us more about what you're going to cook for us today. So today I'll be doing a stew piece, and that's like a dish that's a traditional dish that's a comfort food that I grew up on. I mean, everyone knows about jerk chicken and rice and peas and festival, but the world needs to know more about what Jamaican cuisine is about, you know? Like, uh, to share more in depth. You know? And I can't wait to be comforted by your food. Now let's head over to the kitchen. Thank you. Welcome to the kitchen, where the magic happens and where you're going to cook for us today. I'm so tell me, what's the first thing you're going to start with? I'm going to start with the stew peas because that takes a lot of time. So I'm going to start with that. <laughs> I love stew peas and yeah. peas in general, so I'll leave you to it. Good All right, luck. thank you. Most of what I learned, um, then it transcended. Like, as I learned the formal way of cooking, I, I learned the formal way and I integrated what the family taught me, you know, the flavors, you know, how to make it happen. And so I cook with only love. I'm a happy guy when I'm cooking. I, like I'm in a zone when I'm cooking, you know, so it, it has impacted my culinary journey um, greatly. And uh, I think that all my clients have been satisfied because of that love and care that I I put in preparing my food is love. I mean we do it no other way. That's from the heart. You know? Is that jerk chicken I smell? Absolutely not. It's something way better than jerk chicken. 
Everyone knows about jerk chicken. I'm doing something different today. What are you making? I'm making a stew piece. This is a childhood dish that has a lot of soul and memory to it. I love your description, but yeah. since you're not making jerk chicken, there's a plot twist that we're going to add to this game. No. So I'm going to introduce no, no. you. <laughs> chef Justin, he has a little something <laughs> that he wants to tell you. Hi, Chef. Hi. Look what I brought you. Fresh from Florida, sweet peppers, delicious and beautiful, so much color. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be your secret ingredient. Now, I know you know that we have two vegan guests coming tonight, yeah. so you're gonna have to incorporate these into your meal. And I know you can do it. No problem. All right. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> when I cook now, there is a story behind every meal. I mean, some people will be receptive to um, the, the authentic Jamaican food while some because of health reasons they can't manage the spice and stuff like that I have to tweak it a bit but most times the story behind it um, helps it to be received even better you know sometimes I get worried that my food won't be received um, the way um, I'm translating it and uh, but it's it always works out because so much love and respect is put in that. You know, I don't um, approach it um, from with arrogance and and proudness. It's 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 a lot of reverence when I cook that meal. You know, so most times it is well received. You know, there's a lot of love going in it, and for sure it's not a competition. It's just um, my fellow. Caribbean brothers and sisters coming together to express their 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 art in the form of cooking. So it's not like a competition, you know, we're just sharing cultures and flavors. So I think it will be well received and everybody's gonna have fun and enjoy. It. Hello, hello. Hi. Hang up on you. What exactly are you doing? I'm doing the cabbage slaw. Um that goes with um, the stew peas. The beans are, the stew peas are almost there simmering, so you can taste can it. I try them? Definitely. I don't like Let's waiting see. until the last minute. I want to taste them now. I'm going to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. It's actually really good. Yeah? I'm going back. No, not that. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everything tastes amazing. Right. Everything looks amazing. Just keep chopping. Can't wait to taste more of it over there. To be a part of this show means a lot. I mean, to be to be a part of a part, the first of anything, it's um, it's an amazing feeling and honor to represent your country. Not only your country, the people of the country and the people of the Caribbean. To be on show for the world, that's an amazing feeling. Every chef would want that opportunity. I mean, it will do a lot for me as a person, you know, notoriety and getting out there. People will know me more, and it also will boost my confidence as a chef. Every first world country has a big influence on the Caribbean. They've been our colonial masters and stuff like that. So it, it's, we're underestimated but we are a power packed nation, you know, the Caribbean diaspora itself, you know. Um, and I think the world at large should take some more time to, you know, find out what's going on in the Caribbean. It's not all about the sun and the sea, you know, and the sun and Ironman, you know. It's, it's deeper than that. The culture is good culture is great it's worth knowing in Caribbean cultures food is more than just sustenance it's a way to connect with our heritage our families and our community to us the most powerful thing to do is to pull up a chair with contestants and judges alike to share the food that we love welcome everyone to the Caribbean cookout show who's excited to be here today yeah. we're finally at the dinner table ready to eat and savor the food that our amazing chefs created for us tonight. Come out, chefs. We want to see what you made. 
Yeah. Ooh, welcome. Show us your plates a little bit. We want to see. Mm. <laughs> That's delicious. Yes. Talk about presentation. Guys, tell me a little bit about the presentation. What do you guys think? It looks oh, beautiful. Love it. Gorgeous. Love it. Yes, delicious. What did you guys make exactly? Well, I made uh, rice grits mm. with uh, sort of like a braised peas with ham and conch. Mm. And then I did a rock salt and goat pepper cured snapper with conch chips on top. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, what did you do? What did you do, Sam? Oh, well, <laughs> I prepared a child favorite of mine. Um, I didn't want to go with jerk chicken or anything like that because, I mean, everyone knows about it. So I wanted everyone to have a different taste of Jamaica, a different feeling. We know about the lobsters and everything like that. But we need to know about the other aspects of Jamaica. So I present to you tonight um, a stew piece. Um, it is filled with different cuts of meat, pork and beef and a coconut jasmine rice and a cabbage slaw mm. that oh, and citrus sauce with citrus mm. so it brings a sort of freshness to the dish to cut through that richness in the stew So chefs, I heard that there was a plot twist to this whole event about something vegetarian, vegan tell us how you guys managed to incorporate that in your meals well, for me, I uh, when they brought in those ingredients, I immediately knew what I was going to do. So I did the same way I treated the fish, I treated the vegetables. So I did a salt, coke, pepper cured zucchini and squash. And then I left out the meat out of the peas and then just put it all together because the grits was already vegan. Just made with coconut milk and coconut oil and that's it. Well, for me, it was a joy preparing my vegetarian meat because it represents the Rastafarian aspect of Jamaica. You know, with um, good caloric value, you know, I added some um, garbanzo beans and stuff to that, that adds protein to the, to, the, to the dish to make it a complete meal. So, um, the coconut rice was already vegan, so I did it. A twist on the stew beans with kidney beans, um, garbanzo beans. But what I did, I crisp up the garbanzo beans so it adds texture to the dish. Mm -hmm. Like most vegans have um, a challenge getting good textures in their meal. So that's fried, that's crispy, along with the planting to balance the spiciness in the dish. Amazing. Amazing. Well, now we want to see your beautiful meals. So let's pass them around and let's look. <laughs> <laughs> We're eating soon. Where are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that fish? What, what's that? Uh, snapper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, definitely something you'd see at a five star restaurant. And this yeah. is Michelin okay, star so yeah, you can just presentation. Okay. There we go. This is show and tell. <laughs> Is that dumpling? Presentation. You know, this reminds me of a Haitian dish. Um, the, it's called sauce pois. Yeah. And you know, we put a dumplings and with the with the rice. Yeah. Yeah. I love the presentation too. Oh, yeah. Chaka. Chaka. That looks just like that. That's right. So, how does this these particular dishes that you guys created tonight like represent your country, like where you're from? Uh, well, everybody where I'm from eats grits. Mm -hmm. We also eat rice. But the play on uh, rice grits mm -hmm. is totally different. Mm -hmm. And then also to pea soup, which is basically the foundation for the sauce that I created, mm -hmm. uh, was my spin on it. So you have all those ingredients, and we all eat snapper all the time. Yes, so that's a Caribbean thing. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And what about you? Well, um, this dish has a lot of historic value to it. I mean, I'm from, I was raised in the first capital of um, Jamaica, which is Punchdown. I mean, mm -hmm. Everything that here represents the colonial um, history of Jamaica, the Spanish took the peas, mm -hmm. um, the cattle, and everything like that. I mean, 
the ocean was always there. We had lobsters and everything like that. And the Africans or um, the African history would be the jerk chicken and so forth. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people um, know about this yeah. um, aspect of Jamaica, you know. And you can see a similar dish in in Brazil, the feijoada, mm -hmm. similar Spanish influence. Yeah. So I felt good um, presenting this dish, not only because it's part of our colonial history, but it's because of my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, she mm -hmm. has a lot of history in this dish. I used to look forward to getting this dish after school every Thursday. Wow. <laughs> after school, I listen for that pressure cooker going. Yeah. I know what time it is. It's stupid. It was yeah. done with soul. It was done with soul yeah. and a lot of comforting. Right. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Now, Chef, you look like you've been standing for a while. How about you join us? Join us. Join us. These are the famous vegan dishes. This is uh, goat pepper salt cured zucchini and That's squash, uh, okay. along with uh, braised peas mm -hmm. and uh, piri piri sauce, which is roasted red pepper uh, and citrus and vinegar, because they gave us red peppers as a part of the, the mystery, mystery ingredients. Mystery ingredients. Gorgeous. It's amazing. Yeah. And now, Chef, tell me a little bit about your amazing dish. Well, this is um, a stewed peas with um, bell peppers, gar um, crispy garbanzo bean, and fried plantain. Ooh. Ooh. I can't wait to try it. Are you guys excited? Yeah. 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 Well, now we have some questions after you all devoured this amazing food. Mm -hmm. So, let's start with you. <laughs> what did you think about the food from the Bahamas? Oh my god, it was so good. And my favorite part of your meal was the conch chips. I've yes. never had that. They were flavorful, but I still tasted a little bit of the conchy flavor. That was so good. That was so good. Yeah, I'm I agree. I didn't even see when you did that. Because it was like, How not a do that? rhyme, but a conch, it was like a crunchy conch chip. Like, yeah. I don't know, right? Yeah. Do they have that a lot in, in the house? No, it's something that I'm working on. I know. Oh. 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 Yeah. 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 We love an innovation. Yeah. 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 Like a yeah. big well, dish yeah. in, our, in our tradition, too, in, in Haitian culture. So that was amazing. I'm like, how did you do yeah. that? Right. Yeah. I wanted to take, do you have any more? Yeah, where's the ball? Taking a Ziploc bag at home. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was amazing. I love Thank that you. part of it. So, okay, what did you think about the Bahamian food? Um, I felt like I was on vacation, to be honest with you. Like, you think you think the Bahamas, you think vacation, but like five-star vacation on a plate. Yeah. So, like, I was feeling everything. My favorite part was definitely the snapper. Oh, nice. Um, Yeah, the snapper was the best part, because it reminded me a lot of home. So like 
snappers are really big deal in Rotan, the island that I come from. So like, you know, it, it was just like a piece of home on vacation, if right. that makes sense. Right. So it was just on like, a plate. It was on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my stomach, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And now, let's go on to you. What did you think of the spiciness of the food? <clears throat> well, I think it was really good. Um, the fact that I'm an artist and I get to travel and, you know, all around the Caribbean mm -hmm. and taste, you know, each country's food. And um, I know that we're connected to food, to, okay, yeah. to the culture and everything. But um, today I got to taste something different because when I, you know, usually if I go to Jamaica, they're going to serve me jerk chicken. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, when I go to the Bahamas, they, they serve me the conch, the conch um, a yeah. certain way. But today I got to experience a different side, which I really liked. Mm -hmm. What hit me the most um, was the, the rice and beans, which I love from the get go. <laughs> and, and I really liked um, the spices that were used with the fish and the mix. I, I love zucchini, so I love the vegetables as well. It wasn't too spicy, it was the, the, the right amount of spice. So I, I really love it. And I mean, we're all Caribbean here, so we yeah, like our yeah. side. Yeah. We yeah. like our side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, who's that? What did you think about the food in general? Like, no, I talked to everything. So, you know, I was ready to jump in the plate. <laughs> the minute like they were doing the presentation so I was excited to just kind of taste the different variations of what they had going on and the first thing that caught you know my attention when he said rice grits so it's like because there's a lot of Caribbean people that especially Asia, they won't really eat grits yeah. but then my mule my mule <laughs> can't say nothing about grits so I was like but rice and grits like what is that so I was excited to try that and I think what I loved about it, you know, like we do a lot of brunch, mm -hmm. shrimp and grits and so on. But this was such a different combination of how he did the fish. And mm -hmm. like I asked him earlier, I was like, well, how did you do, you know, the snapper? Because I'm used to having a big so snapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little old snapper. It tastes, but it was so full of flavor mm -hmm. and everything. And then mixing it up with the grits. But you still didn't tell me how you did the. <laughs> <laughs> it's just literally pulverized rice. So you mill rice the same way that you mill uh, grits corn. Oh. It's basically the same. So it's not like rice and grits mixed no, together? No, no, there's no oh, corn in it. Really it's it. all rice. Oh, wow. wow. No. I'm going to taste that again. <laughs> <laughs> now that you say that, because I'm seeing it differently. Yeah, because yeah. we said rice grits. I'm like, make that make sense. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it would be in a partial feed, grits. Yeah, so okay. it's milled rice. Nice. That was everything. That was good. Yeah. Thank you. Your own twist of things. Right. We start with the chips, and now we have innovative. 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 That's what the Caribbean is. That's, that's where we are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Experimenting and just coming up with greatness and amazing. That's right. Different spices and everything. Mm -hmm. Flavors. Yeah, what did you think was some, some, some similarities? I definitely loved it. I mean, of course, being from Haiti, it does remind me a lot, especially the rice. But the flavor that he added, the little spices, different spices, even the, the, the smell of the food is not so good and mm -hmm. delicious. Mm -hmm. Man, you guys killed it tonight, really. I, uh, yep. It was amazing. It's simply amazing. Like, we're talking about all of the food that we ate. Yeah. What about our vegans? Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's often difficult when you go out to eat to get a good vegan meal mm -hmm. that fills you up. And both chefs, you guys did a fantastic job. Yes. I mean, because I was, I'm totally full tonight. <laughs> um, I have never had a zucchini that was that tasty. That is such a oh, difficult yes. thing to do. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you marinated it or what kind of special sauce you put on it, but it was the best was zucchini I've ever had in my life. Man. And then to mix it with the peas, like I just, that combination was was great. Um, it sure was. It was, it was, it was really good. But also, I mean, j just to echo what you said, I mean, just the, um, the beans and rice mixed with the uh, garbanzo beans and the plantains. Like there were so many layers of flavor on there. Yes. I mean, bo both were fantastic. And, and to cut, a, well, obviously the slaw was a nice light additive. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, there were, everything was, was heavy-ish. I don't know if that's a correct word, right? Heavy? -ish? <laughs> <laughs> it was heavy, but the slaw really helped to uh, balance out the meal as well. Yeah. So I, I appreciated that.
Awesome. Yeah, the flaw reminded me of something we have in our culture called pig leaf. Yeah. And it's just like pickled peppers, but it, I, so when I saw it, I thought it was going to be super spicy, but it was like the, so mild, so well done. Mm -hmm. Amazing. The pig without the pepper. Right, exactly. right. right. Exactly. I was, I was asking them early, like, have you yeah. ever had pig leaves? Like, is that something like you guys already know that we share in common? No. Law? Have you heard of that? No. 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 no you have never had weekly. No, never. That's wow. Amazing. And they were not that this different. Well, I was telling him the same thing culture. similar. He has um about you guys have weekly. Yeah. Has this coleslaw. In Honduras, we have something that looks exactly the same, but we use like more vinegar in it, and we use it on our enchiladas, on our tacos. So it's like it's definitely like it tastes very similar to it, just a little less vinegar. Yeah. So it was very, it was very at home for us too. Yeah, yeah. 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 something fire. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, right. yeah. Yeah. Like a salad, it's like a nice refreshing salad. It's almost the same. Yeah. 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 It's pickly, yeah. but it's spicy. Yeah. So I thought his was going to be spicy, but then it was, and yeah. I was like, oh, but but I also kind of thought it was going to be sweet. Because mm -hmm. normally, if it's not spicy, it's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah. Right? So when it wasn't, I was like, okay, it's kind of like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's so refreshing and light, too. It's like also. a palate cleanser. Yeah. 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 It's like the more you eat it, the more you want to eat more. The combination of everything, because you know, Every, like I had to make it a Caribbean. <laughs> everything went together and it was just amazing. What did you think, bro? Yeah. What did I think? Yeah. Everything was amazing. It was hard for me to choose which one I would like best. <laughs> uh, like you said, I never had the pig leaves before. I've never even had. I've never heard of it before. So today, wow. it's my first time. Is there any similarities to like Panamanian culture? I will say the rice and beans. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's like a staple. For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The grits. Like she said, I was curious because I cooked it, so I love to make coconut rice and any kind of rice, and yeah. I like it to smash down. It's like <laughs> it's like a mochi, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's that was great. Chef Justin, I want I want to know more what you would think about. What, did you see some similarities between the two dishes? What could you tell us more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I got the pleasure of being in the kitchen with these two spectacular chefs all day long while they cook their dishes. So. <laughs> You know, seeing their camaraderie and, and working together, you know, as you know, all these islands kind of come together and the ingredients they're using and then being able to throw some challenges at them with, with the Florida vegetables, you know, we brought in the Florida sweet peppers and uh, we also had Florida cabbage on the dish. So it's really incredible to see the, the separate islands doing their thing and the way they do it and, and how it all comes together in the end. The level of spice and, and the flavors and the colors, it, it's really incredible and I enjoyed every moment of it. So refreshing, yeah. it was great. I think we all did. I think we all had a great time. Yeah. 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 It sounds, it, it tasted like you used, um, like the meat was, what, what was that, smoked? Smoked. Okay, I like that. I never had it with smoked meat yeah. before. I so, like that. so that's not the typical um, pig tail, mm -hmm. but um, that was thrown at me too. So okay, that was, that was yeah. careful. Okay. Yeah, it added uh, another element to it. I love it. So. Okay, now the zucchini. It was goat cheese and rosemary, right? <laughs> I felt like that was the combo. Um, well, no cheese for sure. What, uh, what was it? What if you said it was a goat puree? What is, what is um, goat peppers um, ah, and sea salt, rock okay. salt. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, I thought so, you said goat something. No. Okay. So, it. we in the Bahamas, we have this technique of cutting peppers into salt. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that we season most of our fish dishes. Mm -hmm. And so, I did a 15 minute uh, goat pepper salt cure on the fish. I mean, they got in the the curveball. I took that and I did the same thing to that. So I uh, cured the zucchini and the squash in the same seasoning as the fish. Ah, for about okay. That's why it tastes so, so that's good. Yeah. 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 It was like meat. Like it was yeah. like yeah. Oh my god. Because it, it it takes out some of the moisture yeah. and makes it more uh, kind of 
gives you the vibes of eating meat. Yes. And you know, it increases that umami factor mm -hmm. that kind of takes it to the next level. Mm. Because I was vegan for three and a half years. Mm. So, okay. I, so I, a I vegan twist wasn't even a twist for you. you know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I love zucchini, but oftentimes it's always slimy. But that was like yeah. a perfect. Yeah, so it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I don't know what on my plate was vegan. I know I had it. <laughs> <laughs> I drink to that. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. So thank you guys for coming out to the Caribbean. Food has power. The power to bring people together. The power to make us feel at home. The power to comfort us and bring us joy. In kitchens everywhere, mothers and fathers are teaching their children how to keep the heartbeat of their roots alive. Gather your loved ones, your neighbors. Live generously, share meals and hearts. Let your laughter be loud and your love be strong. So whether you're from the Caribbean or just love good food, we welcome you to our table. <laughs>